Hello you beautiful awakened and evolving souls and welcome to another concept of this beautiful philosophy that we call the law of one. I usually start these videos making the disclaimer that these videos are not for specific thorough investigation of each and every one of these concepts but just a basic idea of what they mean because you can always get into the depths of these meanings within the material and as you study it. This is one of those materials that the more you get into integrating all the concepts in a model, the more they make sense and they, the more they sort of stand out for what they mean. So even though I say that normally for every uh, concept, for this one is even more particular because we're talking about the ineffable, intelligent infinity, which normally anything within our language is very, very difficult to describe. And I think that's why we have so many issues when communicating. But especially when we're talking about infinity in any of its aspects or any of, I mean, just, you can see the paradox already there when I say infinity and aspects of it. So you can see already how uh, kind of blurry this becomes after just saying the word infinity. But we're we're going to have to explore it in any ways. And that's my best attempt that I can do. But if anything, this disclaimer is just to tell you that this is just a way we can describe the, um, the notion of it, like Ra has said, and even my description may be more watered down. So take with a grain of salt and just have fun exploring it within the material. Now, the first thing that I have, and this is what Ra uh, said in um, in a question that I'll, I'll read after, after I tell you what this means is that intelligent infinity, it's not two different words, it's a concept. And um, if anything, it could be an approximation to that idea or notion of what intelligent infinity is. And for that, I think I cannot do uh, a better explanation than what Ross said. So I want you to read and listen to what Ross said in question four of session 27. When answering Don's question in question four of session 27, Ross said the following, your language using vibrational sound complexes can be at best an approximation of that which is closer to an understanding, if you will, of the nature of conscious thought. Perceptions are not the same as sound vibration complexes and the attempt to define will therefore be a frustrating one for you although we are happy to aid you within the limits of your sound vibration complexes. To define intelligent apart from infinity is difficult, for these two vibration complexes equal one concept. It is much like attempting to divide your sound vibration concept, faith, into two parts. We shall attempt to aid you, however. So there you see, even Ra has no way of separating the two words of intelligent infinity. They describe one single notion, concept, or perception. I love how they use the phrase conscious thought. You cannot understand conscious thought with, it's not the same as words. And just to give you a step down uh, version that actually happened today to me while I was uh, discussing with my family a word in English, which is the word shallow. Shallow is a word that in Spanish, we don't have uh, an equivalent to that. And I can only describe it as uh, low depth in Spanish. So I need to use two words to describe the same uh, idea that shallow actually means. Not deep or a, an approximation of that would be the word shallow. So here, even though I'm using words, it's the same uh, notion that intelligent infinity is something that even with words we cannot describe, but the best approximation that Ross said was intelligent infinity, because we do have the idea, and this is just my speculation. I would say that uh, infinity is just infinity. The concept of infinity cannot be fathomed by the human mind. However, uh, we, can, we can think about it. We can play with the idea. And intelligent just sort of adds the quality that it's alive, that it's, a, it's, a, it's an evolving, um, entity, if you will. So it's not just, just to separate it from the idea that uh, it's, um, it, it's a, an inert sort of uh, thing in the universe. It's infinity. It's just an infinity of 
dullness. So intelligence actually gives it that quality of, of a living organism, which I think is key. Now, the next thing that I already mentioned is that it's, it has an unspeakable, uh, unspeakable quality, which just means that we, we cannot talk about it, we cannot describe it. There is no way in which we can, uh, we can say, okay, we're, we're gonna put it into symbols and it's going to describe this. Now, I'm just gonna give you a quick philosophy idea of how this, we can process this, um, this, this notion, actually, that we cannot speak about it. Um, when we try to describe experience, we need to put it into boxes. This is how we communicate. For me to describe to you what happened in my trip to the forest, I need to put everything into boxes and I'm going to give you an idea of what I saw, but the experience itself, you're not gonna be able to experience it. So I'm just gonna give you a sort of list of items that you're going to check and say, okay, I can picture yourself in the forest by the trees, by the clouds that were uh, present or how much sun there was or the animals you saw, the vegetation and so on but it's never going to be the experience itself. So it's the same thing with Intelligent Infinity. We cannot talk about this um, or explain it. And that's why in ancient philosophies like Taoism, the Tao is probably the best thing we have for an approximation in our philosophies to describe Intelligent Infinity. Sunyata, which means uh, emptiness or vacuum or void in Sanskrit, sort of refers to the same thing. It's, um, it's a void, even though Ra likes to call it plenum, which I think it's a better word, to be honest, because it describes how everything is full as opposed to empty. And these are two words that are, are completely opposite, but you can see how both words can describe the same thing. A void, which has nothing, and a plenum, which has everything. So that's another way to see uh, intelligent infinity, just to know that it's everything. Now, to get a little bit more into the practical terms, Ra described two aspects of intelligent infinity, which is the undifferentiated intelligent infinity and the differentiated. So what does that mean? There is one that is potential. And uh, even though this becomes a lot more understandable within the context of the law of one, I'm gonna try my best to uh, make, make you see the, the distinction between undifferentiated and differentiated. Undifferentiated is just uh, infinity in its potential. Okay, that's just what it is. It's a, the infinite possibilities lie there and differentiated means in action or in manifestation, in, in the works. It's now being drawn out, it has an inertia. All these terms are being used in the law of one to describe the second aspect of intelligent infinity. And the reason is because intelligent infinity is actually equated to the creator. And the creator is everywhere. There is no creation separated from the creator. The creator is the creation. And every one of us and things that are is just this one organism or this one mind of the creator. So undifferentiated is just the potential that is lying there, infinite. And differentiated is, in essence, the um, what we draw out of intelligent infinity. Now, this is not intelligent energy, which is the next concept I'm going to cover, but it's it's starting to get that flavor flavor already. So you can already see how there is a, a sort of um, uh, a storage, if you will. I mean, this is just a, a crude analogy, but there is a storage of infinite potentials, and then there is the possibility of to draw from that uh, from that storage and the next thing I'm going to say because this is so abstract and it's sort of making sense within the real world well now to bring it to more pragmatic terms we are a limited version of intelligent infinity this is this makes sense and I'll, I'll give you an example so this this kind of just shows its um, its quality we are, and I like to say that we are a limited perception of the evolving of ourselves, the, the, the intelligent infinity that we are, towards the unlimited. When you see how the evolution is described in the law of one, it makes sense that the most uh, dense or least dense, depending on how you want to phrase the densities of consciousness, 
the most, uh, the lowest portions are the most separated uh, particles or um, just objects that exist from infinity. And as we evolve, we become a lot more uh, unlimited. And I think that is uh, that is the that is the process of evolution. If you think about it, it's just evolving. At least evolution in the sense, in the broad sense of evolution of the soul. So uh, we are, and you can see there are two things that I'll say. One metaphysical, and the other one is a very practical one. The first one, metaphysical, is that we are light, and we're filtering that light through our energy centers or chakras. So this light is being distorted by the seven energy centers. And this creates experience, the experience that me and you have. That distortion of light is what we are. However, the evolution is for this light to become so balanced and crystallized that we become that pure light that uh, ignites our red chakra from the beginning and comes out from the violet ray. And so from this balancing, which is the process of evolution, is where you channel intelligent infinity into one being. This is called the mystical experience or simply the evolution or graduation through all the densities of the soul. Now, the more down to earth practice that we can have to understand that we are limited at this point and we are going towards the uh, infinity part of our evolution is that first of all you are already unlimited but you are limited by the differentiated part of intelligent infinity and this is our beingness like i said just right now we don't feel uh infinity we don't feel um unlimited but this is one side on the other side if you think about your the nature of consciousness which is really um, a fascinating topic to include within the law of one. The infinite experience of consciousness that we, are, that we have, that we experience, then you can see that that is the infinity to all calling us to live this way, to exist this way, which is the return to source. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I can give you one way in which you can explore this infinity even though it will collapse right away into limited perception, but you will see a small bubble burst within your consciousness right now, as I ask, not only if you are aware, it's a good question to ask, are you aware? And you will do a check on you and say, well, of course I am aware. But that moment in between the checking and the realization, there is an experience there. And that experience is perfect and it's pure and it's infinite because it's always the same. It's what we call permanent. And so this is one way and you can see uh, the nature of you, the nature of consciousness. The other way, which is something that requires a little bit of thinking, funny enough, is that in between thoughts, what happens in between thoughts? Is there a pause in consciousness? No, there isn't. There is a continuous line of consciousness always. And that's the pure consciousness that we're talking about. That is the infinity that lies in within us. And so this can become a little bit uh, deviated into what is the nature of consciousness. So I'm not going to get there. Even though you can say and you can see that you feel intelligent infinity through that process of becoming aware that you are aware, which is the nature of humans. And that's why I say that, you know, that light that shines within us is already there. Infinity is within us, but we are working through the experience, which is what intelligent infinity actually manifested here to have experience. And we are that portion. Oh, I can go on with different analogies here, but I'm gonna stop there. And leave, this leads me actually beautifully, I didn't even plan this, <laughs> to perception or awareness, which is the key. This is the key to, uh, to discern is, is the key word. Perception or awareness is key to discern between the different stages of uh, consciousness as it is filtered through our energy centers. And that's why I say that the energy centers is probably one of the most beautiful things we can study, the chakras themselves, because it describes 
every single aspect of our consciousness in the different ways in which we can use it. And so perception or awareness is key always to differentiate our experiences and what intelligent infinity is while it's in action. While it is undifferentiated, you can go back to the experience of simply being conscious. Lastly, contact with intelligent infinity is something that Ra speaks a lot about. And this contact of with intelligent infinity is the mystical experience, which we have given all types of names. We have called the religious experience, which is the gift of God, it's said in our Christian traditions and our Western uh, religions. We have given it Satori in Japanese Sen, we have called it uh, Kensho, we have called it Samadhi. Uh, we have all different words to describe this mystical experience. Which again, if you go back to the nature of consciousness, you realize that this is a practice that the, the East has been doing for thousands of years and have been evolving as a culture around this, uh, this feeling of the mystical experience. So contact with intelligent infinity, as Ra describes it, is that ineffable, which again goes with trying to understand the concept or the unspeakable quality that is present in intelligent infinity. So this is something that over time we start having more and more, this contact with intelligent infinity as we divest ourselves from the identities that create the ego self, we start becoming more our true nature, which is the pure consciousness that I alluded to before when I said, do the exercise of simply thinking, what is with between thoughts? You have one thought and the other, what is in between? Or just simply ask yourself, am I aware? And don't ask the question just intellectually to just give the obvious answer that you are. Even though you can realize that you have never been unaware, you have always been aware of something. You have limited perception for sure, but you have always been aware of something or of everything actually in your life. And so before I get too deep into this, that's all I got with Intelligent Infinity. And um, the next concept is gonna tie in perfectly, which is Intelligent Energy. And in essence, it's just a manifestation of Intelligent Infinity. But I have a list of things that I like to talk about. So uh, that's gonna be the next video. As usual, I hope you enjoyed this video, but also that you took something educational for the study of the Law of One, which is really my intention here. If you like it, like, just gently tap that like button, subscribe if you haven't, share it most importantly, and keep loving. I'll see you in the next video.